You're listening to the Packernet Podcast Network. Why take one vacation with the family when you could take all of them? With Royal Caribbean, you don't just go to the beach. You visit a private island and race down the tallest water slide in North America. You don't just go for a road trip. You ATV and zip line through the jungle. You don't just go somewhere new. You rappel down waterfalls and discover ancient temples. Because this isn't just any vacation. This is all the vacations. Come seek the Royal Caribbean. Ships Registry, Bahamas. Survivor 46 is here and so is On Fire, the only official Survivor podcast. And we have a twist this season. The winner of Survivor 45, D. Vyadaris, will be joining us every week. We're going behind the scenes of the biggest moments, the how and the why things happen, and the strategy and analysis you can only get from someone like me, a Survivor winner. Listen to On Fire, the official Survivor podcast, wherever you get your podcasts. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome once again to the Packernet Podcast. I am your host and resident panelist, as always, Ryan Schlipp. Check us out online, packernet.com. Find me on Twitter, pack underscore data. Well, I think today what I'm going to do is what I mentioned that I wanted to do a while ago, and then PFF threw me for a loop because they created this new tool, which would have been perfect, and then they've done nothing with that tool um, since then. I guess it's just going to sit there and they're not going to do the things that they're supposed to do so whatever that'll get released when it gets released i guess and we can revisit this but for those that either didn't hear or don't remember what i'm talking about um l- let me say that. i watched a, a video today it was i don't know one of the nfl shows i can't keep them track of them but three panelists um i think Keyshawn johnson and mina kimes were two of them and i forget who the other guy was but it was the same constant drivel and i'm tempted I'm, i was tempted to play it but we're going to need a lot of time to get through this but it just kind of further illustrates the points that i've been trying to make a long time nobody that's really counting out the packers has anything really of substance and the only thing that the really negative because Keyshawn johnson came out and, and was mostly positive like look i know it's going to be rough but potentially this could be addition by subtraction and the next guy was just beside himself how dare you say this team could be anything other than terrible after losing a hall of famer like aaron Rodgers? right it's such a simplistic thought process it's so stupid it hurts your brain but then mina kimes chimes in and i don't know is she a packer fan because she really it's it's sad that i'm impressed by this but she knew the roster inside and out and she was like it's probably somewhere in between and and she came to the conclusion which is painfully obvious it all depends on love because it is a talented roster and all the again no retort by the negative guy other than to say he's been ambushed this is not fair you forced me to say crazy stuff like he's just, it was so stupid but again it's it's the bottom line is the team is very good it just is and and you can piss and moan about that all you want the talent here there are question marks but of those question marks it's it's not like just any old question mark like jordan love isn't a question mark just like any old random dude off the street is a question mark he's not a fourth round pick he's not a a second round pick he's a first round pick that many projected to be better than um justin herbert the only reason he wasn't projected higher than justin herbert by many people is because he was seen to be a project and needed some time to sit he sat for many 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 years behind hall of famer aaron Rodgers. right that same amazing incredible unbeatable human being and learn behind him. And then on top of that, we, we know that from Rodgers and everybody else that there is a third year where things sort of click for a lot of guys. Everybody said that Jordan Love seems to have had that third year where it clicked. It showed up on uh, in the preseason. It showed up in the regular season when he went out onto the field. He had great statistics and grades and everything else from the limited time that we got to see him. So everything points in one direction. So yes, he is an unknown, but there is reason for optimism as opposed to just like rolling the dice random unknowns. We have unknowns at wide receiver, but I saw some Bears fan, and Bears fans are losing their mind. I, I'm telling you, they are losing it. The craziness that I'm seeing. Yesterday it was Justin Fields is going to be better because he has a six pack and Jordan Love doesn't. I mean, I'm not kidding you. This is, and I, I kept getting into arguments and people kept posting that. Like, you all are actually thinking this is like a slam dunk. How freaking embarrassing, how stupid you all are. And then today I see 
that um, there shouldn't be optimism for Christian Watson because he's 24 years old. In year two, he's 24. I'll tell you what, I, I think the number one second-year quarterback is going to be Kenny Pickett. I actually think he might be a pretty good quarterback. He was 25 when he got drafted, which is to say he should be, oh, I don't know, let me carry the one, 26 years old. But there's a reason for the optimism, as somebody already pointed out. Because we saw Christian Watson, and he was very good. We saw Sky Moore, who is, uh, by the way, 22, I believe, right now, and he was not good at all. So it's not just completely random, unknown things. Jaden Reed isn't just some random dude. He was a second-round pick by the Green Bay Packers who excel at taking second-round wide receivers. Even if it wasn't the Packers, a second-round pick still has relatively high expectations. But considering the Packers' track record, considering he was a high pick, considering his fit with the Green Bay Packers in terms of, hey, we have a void here, oops, he fills it kind of perfectly, there's reason for optimism. But yes, there are some unknowns on the team, and we'll have to see how well it pans out. But anyways, the, the, the thing that I wanted to mention, and, and it's exactly what Mina Kime said, and that is, look, if, if Jordan Love can be... The line, I think ESPN has just the worst, I don't know what their analytics, who sets up their analytics, but they are the worst at analytics. It's so unbelievably bad. They, when they put Billy Turner as one of the best tackles in football, I, I could not believe how bad they were. They had the Packers at like 7.4 wins, which I don't have a problem with that. I mean, everybody was kind of in the middle, so it just, it, it seems like a machine that just kind of takes all the variables and squishes everybody at seven wins because they're really bad at what they do. But it was the fact that the Bears were so high that kind of annoyed me. But but anyways, the, the baseline was, will they be more or less than seven wins? And Mina essentially just said, well, I mean, it, it depends. If Jordan Love is a, a decent quarterback, then yeah, they're going to beat seven wins. If he's a bad quarterback, then probably will be less than seven wins on top of the other variables. And so what I decided to do, because everybody loves to just look at the season and say, if you think they're going to win, and this was, I just saw somebody, he's uh, trying to start up a YouTube channel. I should shout him out because why not? He's trying to do a thing here. Oh, Jeff Darlington, I think was the guy's name. I just, I see I still have the video up. So he's actually got a pretty big following anyways, but um, Sideline Report is the name of his uh, YouTube channel, but he posted on Twitter, I think the Packers are 10 and 7. And Good Morning Football crucified the guy. And of course, that's great for him because he gets to use that uh, as his intro now. <laughs> I need to be more just ridiculous so that national shows pick me up and I can get some more publicity. Not that 10 wins is ridiculous. I'm just saying. It, it's, it, you can't just be like down the middle and expect anyone to care. But why is it ridiculous, right? Why is it that we just look at it and say, there's no way that they're going to be this, that, or the other? Of course they can be. They can end up with the number one overall pick. They can win the NFC. Not North, NFC. There's a path, and it's not a hard one to figure out. Now, those aren't maybe the most likely scenarios, but to sit here and laugh like, 10 wins? <laughs> Why would you laugh? What, what, what? And again, you, I, I didn't even watch it, but I can tell you why they're laughing. Because Rodgers left. How could you get better after Rodgers left? It's just unbelievable. It, it, I'm telling you, this might be hard to believe. It literally hurts. But anyways, the, the point is it depends on the variables, and there are way too many variables to account for. Not only do you have to account for every single individual variable within the Green Bay Packers, which includes every single player and more, but you also have to account for every other team. Every single other team. You know, it, it's ridiculous to think you can compete with the Philadelphia Eagles. What do you know about the Eagles this year? You know that they're the exact same team they were last year? Do you know that they got better than last year? Could they have gotten worse than last year? You don't know. You don't know anything, and neither do I. There's way too many variables to account for. So I'm going to pick just a couple big variables, and you could do other variables if you want, but I'm just going to pick two variables, which is going to give me four outcomes. One variable is the biggest variable, Jordan Love. The other is what I pick to be the biggest, the second biggest variable, which is, as a whole, the defense. So the four things are, and, and you could 
end up making more if you wanted to add like the receiving group like the wide receivers and tight ends like what if those guys meet meet their full potential as opposed to oh man this sucks right you could add that if you wanted to i just think it's it's too much work and it, it gets to, i i don't even know how this is going to pan out in terms of like you know, it's just the same thing over and over again hopefully not but anyways i i just want us to be able to look at things just a little bit differently so the four are uh love and the defense are good uh love's good the defense is bad love's bad the defense is good and both are bad we're going to go through every single game talk about it and try to determine what the situation would be based on the opponent we're going up against and again i don't know everything about this team and what they're going to end up being but we're just going to take what they were last year essentially look at all these grades and just see how good or bad this is going to end up being. This is why I like the, the PFF's tools, because it allows you to adjust the grades, which would be great. I could go in and leave everything the exact same, but give Jordan Love a 40 PFF grade and just let it run its simulation and see what happens. I could give him an 80 PFF grade, but then drop the defense down, you know, lower people's grades down to like, let's say, whatever I determine their floor to be. Run that simulate, you know what I mean? But that's what we're going to try to do on the fly here. All right, so very this, this is an easy one. Let's say Jordan Love is good. And by good, we're talking, let's say he's a, a 75 to 80 PFF grade. Seems unlikely, but it's not necessarily all that unlikely. It's just sort of the high end of the spectrum for a young quarterback. And, and again, he's above what you would call a rookie quarterback. Because, you know, when you have such intense training for as long as he's had, you know. But anyways, um, so the defense is really good. What is that going to do to Justin Fields? He's probably going to run quite a bit but there's going to be a lot of pressure. He's not going to be able to get the ball to his receivers. That's going to be a disaster. They're not going to score a lot of points. On the other side of things, they don't have a lot of pressure up front on a very good quarterback. Their corners are not good. Their safeties are pretty good. And they went out and got a bunch of linebackers. We're not going to have a really super tough time running the ball because, again, the defensive front is bad. And we're going to be able to throw the ball because, well, their secondary is not great. We'll see if Jaquan Brisker takes a step or whatever. But um, Eddie Jackson had a pretty good year, but he also has had three terrible years prior to that. So. Anyways, the bottom line is this is a win. Now, what if the defense is bad, as in like as bad as it was last year? We're talking beginning part of the year, not how they ended. Well, that certainly makes things a little bit more difficult. I will say we started the year slow on defense last year and the Bears only scored 10 points against us. But even if you assume they get a little bit more, say they get 14, 17, whatever, if Jordan Love is still good, I don't have any problem getting to that, let's say, 24 point actually probably significantly higher than that because this is one of the worst defenses in football with a couple additions and some potential for guys to get better granted but i think it's a terrible front four and i just don't see much so so that's a win even if the defense doesn't pick up but the offense specifically jordan love is is quite good we got this in the bag now what if jordan love is really bad that's tough because in this situation we have a good defense so i don't expect the bears offense to do jack squat in fact we played the bears twice prior to our defense taking a step we played them one week before our bye and then we played them in week two they scored 10 and 19 points so let's say we stick them at uh well let's just say 10 right i don't expect any more than 10 with a solid defense i don't want to go less than 10 because that seems even with a good defense to be a, a tough thing but how many points are we getting if jordan love is just just bad i think that's tough i'm gonna give us a win here because I think it's going to be hard to come across wins with a bad quarterback, and we've got to have a couple. But also because I think it's it's with such a low bar to get over, you can find ways to win with short passes, which is what the offense is largely going to be anyways. Things behind the line of scrimmage, the 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 um, the end around to Christian Watson, stuff like that. We've got the versatility with our new punt returner wide receiver to be able to just get balls in guys' hands and let them do some yards after the catch stuff, utilize the running backs. So I'm going to give us a, a W, but I think this is a tough win. Now, with both being bad, again, it's going to be hard to come across wins here. So I'm tempted to give us a W, but let's just be honest about it. It's going to be tough. If our defense is bad, well, granted, again, I can only give them maybe 15 points. <sighs> I should just give us a, you know, it's a, it's a good troll move anyways. Plus, we again, it, there's going to be almost no wins with bad. If Jordan Love can't play and our defense is bad, we're, we're, we're going to struggle to find a single. I'll just call it a loss. I'll call it, we'll, we'll play the, the Bears again later at home. We can let that be our win or something. All right, let's carry on. Next, we are uh, on the road again, this time to the Atlanta Falcons. Again, a team that is not very good. They've got a fantastic offensive line, but as far as I know, Desmond Ritter is their quarterback, which is a disaster. They did draft Bijan. They do have Drake London. Those are a couple good weapons along with Kyle Pitts, right? They are adding a lot of weapons 
and have a good offensive line, but the quarterback is a massive question mark, as is their defense, despite bringing in Jesse Bates. Let's just jump to the conclusion that this is a W if both aspects are good. Very similar to the um, Chicago Bears, if our defense is bad, I still like our chances of Jordan Love against this defense. Because again, we're pitting bad defense against bad defense, and then it comes down to the offense. And if you've got a good quarterback against a bad quarterback, where does the W go? It goes in our column. With a bad quarterback, but a good defense, again, bad quarterback is a tie, bad defense is a tie. In this case, however, we're on the road, we're in Atlanta, and they have Drake London. I know we have Christian Watson. I like Christian Watson. London was the 11th best wide receiver in football last year. As much as I'm optimistic, that's scary. Kyle Pitts, elite football player. And they have Bijan, who, you know, I'm not going to just launch him above our running backs, but I'm going to give them the W, which is an L for us, which very easy to say, if this is an L, then if both are bad, that's an L. After that, we've got the New Orleans Saints. They've got Carr at quarterback, which is certainly questionable. Kamara still got a little bit left in the tank, but not quite what he was. Got a bunch of wide receivers, but Michael Thomas has got to stay healthy. Olave was a talented wide receiver last year for sure. Offensive line is a little bit questionable, but then the defense is a pretty scary defense. So if both are good, we've got good defense against good defense. We have a better offensive line. We have a better quarterback. They maybe have better wide receivers. That remains to be seen in the tight end. Wouldn't be surprised if that falls in our column, as does running back. So I'm giving us the W if we are good in both columns. If we have a bad defense, they're going to run right through our defense. Now that we, you know, they may struggle a little bit here and there because, again, offensive line is a problem. Their quarterback can be somewhat questionable, but they're going to be able to work against us because we're bad. We're going to have a little bit more resistance, even though we have a solid offense because, you know, they've got some players here, man. Now, the corners are a little bit down, so maybe we could work against that, but the pass rush is going to be there. The running, I think, is going to be a little bit complicated. So I'm actually going to give us an L if we don't have a good defense in this game. And if we have a bad quarterback against this defense, it's an L, which means if both are bad, it's an L. Again, I'm just kind of guessing. You never know how these things are going to pan out. And I'm starting to think that it's just sort of like, if the first column is an L, the rest are L's. If the second so so whenever you hit an L, the rest are L's is what I'm kind of thinking. But we'll see. I'm I'm looking for a situation where it's a, a W and then an L after that. Next up, Detroit Lions at home. Again, I'm going to call this a relatively easy one. If we have the defense clicking at 100 percent and Jordan Love is playing at a a high level, this is a win. Uh, they've got a their suspended wide receiver who's clearly not going to have any uh, impact on this game. They do have Amon Ross St. Brown. They got a good offensive line. Goff will see what he can be, and the defense is still problematic. So we have a good defense. We're going to slow down their offense. We have an offense that's going to rip right through their defense. That's a W. Um, again, similarly, if we have a bad defense, that so so this is kind of where it gets into. If we have a bad defense, everything kind of ties. But now it's kind of like where do we rank here? Because we have a good offensive line, but so do they. We have a good quarterback, but Jared Goff was twentieth with a seventy-two point four grade. Maybe he doesn't replicate that. You know, he he might not, but that's kind of what he's been his whole career. Um, so he's likely to stay in that range. That's So let's say that's roughly what we get from Jordan Love. Do we have better running backs? Probably. Tight end? I don't know. We got rookies. They got Laporta. Rookie. St. Brown is probably the best wide receiver out of the group, but I think all of our wide receivers after that are pretty much better than their twos and threes. So that's kind of tough. So um, being that it's at home, I'm going to give us the win, but I think it's a tough situation. If Jordan Love is bad, but our defense is really solid, that's kind of tough. Because again, you can kind of navigate your way around, maybe find ways to score points. I think here's kind of my compli- Here, Here's where I struggle. It depends what this game looks like. If our defense is able to really, really keep the score low, then I don't know. But the Lions are a high-flying team. They score a lot of points. So even if we keep, let, let's say they're averaging 30, even if we keep them down to 24, that's a pretty good defensive performance considering, but can we score 25? I mean, again, I'd love to give us a tiebreaker because we're at home, but I just don't see a bad Jordan Love winning this game. So through the first four games, we are undefeated with a good defense and a good Jordan Love. We're 3-1 and one if we have a good Jordan Love and a bad defense. We're 1-3 and three 
with a bad Jordan Love and a good defense, and we are winless if both are bad. We could probably stop right now just because I've already made my point, but we're going to keep going because this is what I plan to do for the day. But you get it, right? Anyways, continuing on, we've got the Las Vegas Raiders. Picked up Jimmy Garoppolo. Pretty rough offensive line with the exception of a tackle. Um, Devontae, obviously, is the scary one of the group. Hunter Renfro's had a good career, but he was a, did have a down year last year. Remember, you got a new offensive coordinator. You've got Devontae in there now. You've got a different quarterback. I don't know that you can 100% rely on Hunter Renfro bouncing back. Maybe you can. I don't know. Um, and then beyond that, the defense is just a complete joke. I mean, the, the, Max Crosby is one of the best pass rushers in all of football. No doubt about it. Everybody, I mean, th- this, is, this is abysmal. It's unbelievable how bad this defense is. So, uh, yes, we will win if both are playing at a high level. With a bad defense, it still wouldn't be as bad as their defense. And so would I take, and and I guess it is a a relatively fair question because it is similar to the Lions. I mean, Jimmy Garoppolo is not great, but 71.4 is pretty standard for what he is. Although, I think he was kind of in that 49er system. Granted, you know, he did it in New England, and now he's got a New England guy or all that. So, so maybe he stays in that range, fine, 71-ish. They probably have a better running back than we do, one of the few teams that can say that. Probably have better wide receivers than we do. And with uh, Austin Hooper there, good chance it's a better tight end than we have, but with a significantly worse offensive line. So it's still not an automatic. But I still think with a better quarterback, and I will put Jordan Love above Garoppolo, even if just marginally, but... Jordan Love with a lot of time in the pocket. Max is is obviously a freak and all that, but that's pretty much it. So we've got guys that can come in and help against Max, and then he's got no other help. I just think we are, plus with the style of offense that we're going to have, we're going to bleed this defense down. We're going to stay on the field, and we're just going to burn them to the ground. So it's not an automatic thing, but I am going to give us the win if if Jordan Love is the dude. Because look, these are the games that we probably would have won with Aaron Rodgers last year. And I'm putting Jordan Love slightly ahead of where Aaron Rodgers was last year. Remember Jordan Rodgers down in like the 20s. I'm putting Jordan like close to the top 10s, 12th, 10th, somewhere in that range. Maybe 15th. I don't know. I mean, Jimmy Garoppolo is 22nd with it with a 71 grade. But I am going to give that a win with a bad quarterback and a good defense. That's actually really tough. This might be. I mean, I I just think this offense really struggles again with a with a quarterback unshielded by Shanahan. I think they're going to try to lean on. I mean, I know they've got Devontae, but this is a team, at least in the past, that like to kind of lean on some of the more simplistic things, Jacobs and the tight ends and whatnot. I mean, if we more or less neutralize, and by neutralize, I just mean make sure he doesn't run away with 110 yards and three touchdowns, Devontae Adams, bring him down to like four receptions, 40 yards or something, and that's it. Neutralize the run game for the most part. And I know it's tough, but I mean, if, if a struggling quarterback is going to win, it's going to be against a Raiders defense. So I'm actually going to give us a win on that one. Our second win with bad Jordan Love. But yes, it is a loss otherwise. Uh, I tell you what, we're going to hit our bye week here right after the Raiders game. So we're going to take this bye week as an opportunity to take a break. Please consider donating on Patreon at patreon.com forward slash pack underscore daddy. Otherwise, Venmo is Packernet Podcast if you'd rather go that route. Any and all support is greatly, greatly appreciated. Also, please check out Fertile Ground Ranch Discipleship Ministry. You can find them at FertileGroundRanch.org. We'll take a break. We'll be right back. Hey, U.S. Cellular customers, I've got good news, so don't hit skip forward just yet. I'm talking about their special customer event, Us Days. What's Us Days? It means exclusive offers just for their customers, just to say thanks, like up to $1,200 to upgrade to any new phone. No, I didn't just misread that. That's up to $1,200 off. They must really like you. Us Days at U.S. Cellular, exclusive offers just for you, just to say thanks. Right now, U.S. Cellular customers get up to $1,200 to upgrade to any new phone. Terms apply. Why take one vacation with the family when you could take all of them? With Royal Caribbean, you don't just go to the beach. You visit a private island and race down the tallest water slide in North America. You don't just go for a road trip. You ATV and zip line through the jungle. You don't just go somewhere new. You rappel down waterfalls and discover ancient temples. Because this isn't just any vacation. This is all the vacations. Come seek the Royal Caribbean. Ships Registry, Bahamas. 
Hey, it's Kaylee Cuoco for Priceline. Ready to go to your happy place for a happy price? Well, why didn't you say so? Just download the Priceline app right now and save up to 60% on hotels. So whether it's Cousin Kevin's Kazoo concert in Kansas City, go Kevin! Or Becky's Bachelorette Bash in Bermuda. You never have to miss a trip ever again. So download the Priceline app today. Your savings are waiting. Go to your happy place for a happy price. Go to your happy price, Priceline. It's only a kick, a jump, a block. It's only a serve. It's only a tackle, a run. It's only for the fans. After all, it's only pressure. You got this. Adidas. All right, continuing on, we've got the Denver Broncos. So, you know, I, I've been a guy that has said, you know, Denver has potential for a really, really long time. And I feel like it's it's fool's gold at this point and I should just stop. But there is a part of me that wonders, okay, Wilson obviously was bad last year. But how much of that was Nathaniel Hackett just having no idea what the heck he was doing? I mean, really, it was it was a complete disaster. And they allowed him to be Mr. Hollywood and all this stuff. And Hackett was trying to like like okay Russell whatever you want and now the new head coach is going to come in and say no you're going to do what the heck I say it's going to be a lot more structure and everything else I I expect him to be better however even in 2021 Russell Wilson took a a pretty big step back in Seattle so I expect him to be better than he was last year but not exactly you know 2018 2019 2020 Russell Wilson Um, with that said pretty solid you know decent enough offensive line I guess Wide receivers, I mean, I guess I'm supposed to gush over Jerry Judy because that's just what you're supposed to do. I haven't seen the guy do anything yet. Patrick Sertan at corner, I mean, decent defense. I mean, it's it's a a decent enough roster from top to bottom. Not necessarily elite with the exception potentially of Patrick Sertan, but nothing really terrible either. So do we beat this team if we're good on it? Yes, we do. Easily, yes. What if we have a bad defense? I'm not super scared of dangerous even if he does take a step back to what he was last year, which was or, or two years ago, which was decent, but still like something's wrong. And with Jordan Love playing at a high level, yes, we win this game with good Jordan Love, bad defense. With a bad Jordan Love, I mean, I, I know we're supposed to gush over their defense as well as Jerry Judy, but I mean, they were 14th in points given up and 7th in yards. So they're good to mediocre, I guess. And then our defense is just going to absolutely dominate their offense so i mean it's tough it's mostly just to illustrate a point anyway so it doesn't super matter i could give them the nod because we're on the road but i'm not going to i'm just going to give us a win here do we lose if both are bad yes and honestly as i look at it it's like well i mean you you can't just lose all of them technically you can because what you're talking about when you say good jordan love versus um you know bad jordan love or whatever you're talking about looking at it in each individual game. Even if Jordan Love is bad, he's going to have some good games. Even if the defense is good, it's going to have some bad games. So that's where the fluctuation comes in. But in this case, that's not the case, right? So it's an unrealistic situation in which on one side, the defense and the quarterback are playing at a high level every single time. We're talking every snap of every game. And then on the other one, it's so, so it probably will be all wins as opposed to all losses and then some fluctuation in between in order to demonstrate the point, because that's what it's going to do, is demonstrate the point. Just letting you know it's probably going to end up that way, and it it actually isn't as unrealistic as it seems. We could do the same thing if we said, what if we still had Aaron Rodgers and he was playing at MVP level? Well, we'd probably win every single game. Aaron Rodgers at his best is just, it's unbeatable. So, yeah, we would be. But but then why didn't we do it when he was, because he wasn't at his best in every single game. That's why. It averaged out to that. All right, now we get the Minnesota Vikings at home. Um, If both are solid, again, it's still going to be a win. I mean, it's tough. A good defense up against their offense, still some potential uh, for for heartache there there, and for them being able to do some stuff. They've got, you know, an improved offensive line. Cousins kind of played out of his mind a little bit last year, except when he didn't feel like it. Jefferson's still one of the top receivers. They drafted Addison, right? I mean, there's some stuff here. But then you look at their defense, and that's kind of where things kind of go haywire. Um, if our defense is bad, I, I just I don't know if I can give us a win. As as much as you look at it and go, well, they have a bad defense. I mean, you know, this team can put up forty points, no problem. I I just think with our offense 
playing out. I, I guess I shouldn't necessarily say that. We've got some high flying. That would be kind of crazy if it was like a <laughs> 50 to 45 shootout or something. I don't know. I, I just hate the idea of us having a bad defense against this offense because, I mean, you look at the things that they've done. I mean, they're, they're kind of like the Lions in a way where when they get rolling, it's it's kind of like a, a freight train that just will not stop. I guess I'll give us a W last time. And you know what? I'll just put it in now. W this time, and then we'll do an L down here just so I don't have to remember that for next time. And I can do that again. We'll give a W over here. Somebody ringing my doorbell? What is this, 1942? I don't be coming to people's doorsteps unless you got an apple pie. Anyways, bad quarterback. Um, I, I still think it's the Vikings just because, you know, I'm not going to say they can overcome our... I, should I say that, though? I don't know. I think I'll just do it again. It'll be a win-loss. Because, you know, no. <laughs> I can't make up my mind. Like, I, I, I don't know. I, th I think they're going to get points, and I, I even with our defense. Ah, dang it. I don't know. Our defense playing at a really high level. Did we play the Vikings late last year? How late did we play them last year? We did, and they scored 17 points. See, that's what I'm talking about. Our defense, the last four games, five technically, but it was the Bears, and it was before. The, I don't think that counts. 12, 20, 17, 20. That's what they gave up, and the Vikings were 17. Man, we beat them 41 to 17? I don't even remember that. That must have been satisfying. I want to go back and watch that game. I don't even remember that beating. Phone calls. All right, we're back. So anyways, Minnesota Vikings with a bad quarterback hemming and hawing here. I think I'm going to do the same thing and just split it. Vikings against our good defense only managed 17 points. 17 might not be a guarantee with uh, Jordan Love if he's really struggling, but considering that the... the um, pieces around him and the fact that the defense that he's going up against might be might have been one of the worst last year if not the worst i'm just going to go ahead and well again we'll split it and yes if they're both bad we lose this rams that's an auto w if we've got everything humming because the rams are just a uh kind of a disaster that seemed to be getting worse and worse matt stafford had his worst year since 2015 um his second worst year since his rookie year um so or third worst since his rookie year whatever third worst of his career but um they i mean they've got a below average offensive line a really falling apart quarterback they got cooper cup and aaron donald and just not a lot else going on there i think the packers have kind of got the rams number so it's kind of W's across the board. I, I Now, if we have a bad defense and a bad quarterback, kind of becomes the question. I think it's possible for a win, but certainly less likely. So we'll just do win, 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 loss. Steelers, obviously very well known for their super scary defense. Um, Kenny Pickett is sort of the question mark at quarterback. He was kind of a, a he was sort of what we're, angling for in terms of Jordan Love. He had a 75.5 grade as a rookie. Nobody thought anything of him. But again, this is kind of what we're talking about if Jordan Love is just average, right? He was ranked 18th, good PFF grade, right? I mean, this isn't even Jordan Love being amazing. This is just him being like on the low end of good. But uh, Fryermuth, good tight end. They've got some solid wide receiver options, especially if Pickens takes a step. They've got a pretty decent, uh, you know, tight end running back and then a scary defense. So, with everything going at 100%, I still think the Packers would beat this team. The defense would pretty much eviscerate this offense. They're good enough to beat bad teams. They're not necessarily good enough to uh, handle really stout defenses. And while their defense is generally scary based on several of the pieces, including Watt and whatnot, they ranked 10th in points last year, so they were, you know, top third, but that's about it. So, But uh, if Jordan Love's playing at a really high level and the defense is bad, it's certainly tough because, you know, going to face some resistance even with a good um a good quarterback you know they've got well this is where the question marks come in Patrick Peterson had a good year with the Steelers last year but the man is 33 years old he had his first good year since 2018 so there's very high regression probabilities there they have rookie Joey Porter I don't expect much from him I really didn't like him much as a prospect but if Peterson plays at a higher level Joey Porter has a good year then you know whatever but I don't think they're going to have very good corners uh, Minka Fitzpatrick had the best year of his entire career last year. Um, DeMonte Kazee had the best year of his career. Um, so there's a lot of guys that play and played at a high level, but not quite as high as they did this past year. 
Um, Cam Hayward has just been as steady of a freak as can be, but at 34 years old, that that downward spiral has got to come at some point. At least a half a step back at 34, for crying out loud. But I think they're going to have Watt and Hayward that are still really, really solid. And then you're going to see step back, steps back in their defensive back department would be my assumption. So I'll say we win the game if, if Jordan Love is playing really well, because I don't think their defense would match our defense necessarily, even though they'd be better in certain areas. You know, Watt's certainly a freak, but he was ranked 19th last year. He's actually been kind of taking small steps backwards for the last couple of years. He was the number one pass rusher in 2019, the number two pass rusher in 2020, the number six pass rusher in 2021, and the number 19 this year. So very small step, very small step, very small step, and then kind of a decent chunk. So I, I know it seems homerish and ridiculous to say that you could be better than TJ Watt, but again, he was 19th last year. So anyways, yes, I think we win if uh, Jordan Love's playing really well. If he's playing poorly, that's going to be really tough, and I think we lose. The L.A. Chadges, obviously Herbert, good quarterback, got a pretty solid offensive line. At least it's improving, certainly better than it was, but, you know, got some issues. Somehow, Keenan Allen is still playing at a really high level. He's 31 years old, don't really see any signs of regression there. Still have Mike Williams, feels like that's been the wide receiver duo there for, feels like, 10 years. They also drafted Quentin Johnson. I have no idea why they did that. That seems completely useless to me. (laughs) I just, I mean, if you have anything going for you, it's that you have a quarterback and and wide receivers. I understand Allen won't be there forever, but okay, now you have three wide receivers and no defense. Congratulations. But whatever. I mean, just grab talent, I guess. So look, if everything's humming real well, I mean, the defense will be able to handle this offense and our offense is going to cut through this defense like freaking butter. With a struggling defense, obviously it'll be a little bit tough. But, you know, again, their offense ranked 13th in points, 9th in yards. They were kind of a middle-of-the-road offense. I think even our struggling first-half defense with a solid quarterback and a good offense, I think we end up beating that team. And I think if Jordan Love struggles but our defense is still playing well, we've got a pretty good shot here. Because, again, it's a pretty bad defense. Um, They ranked in the 20s. They did miss Bosa for a good portion of the season, but I think that's fairly common. I think the offense will still be able to do some stuff. And if the defense is kind of just lighten up this offense, I'm just going to give us a W on that one as well. And then, yes, a loss. Skip the next Lions game. Go right to the Kansas City Chiefs. Probably the first genuine contender to the, if the defense is playing well and the offense is playing well, what can happen? And it's not even, I mean, a good Packers offense will cut through this defense no problem. The problem is, is a good Packers offense even able to keep up with this offense? So I guess just for the sake of mixing it up, let's just call it a loss. Who cares? So we'll do L's across the board. Uh, New York Giants, 9-7 and seven team, uh, basically middle of the pack on offense and defense. Easy win if everything's working for us. In fact, let's just go down the line. We're going to win um with the Giants the Buccaneers the Panthers the Vikings and the Bears down the stretch with very little resistance if everything's working and let's just assume we lose all of those if everything's not working could revisit uh maybe the Carolina Panthers but I don't care let's let, let we'll, we'll 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 say we win the Carolina Panthers game that we have one win and <laughs> one loss on the other one um but then we'll pay attention to the rest here all right so we got to figure out Giants, Bucks, Panthers, and I think we'll keep the Bears the same. But with a rough defense and a good um, quarterback, I think we've got this in the bag. Because again, remember, bad defense could mean a lot of things, but I'm just basically saying what if our defense was what it was last year? Which technically wasn't bad, it was middle of the road. It was 17th in points, 17th in yards. It was a mediocre defense. We gave up 27 points when we had a mediocre defense last year. Could we score? I mean, honestly, it's kind of close. I mean, you're basically saying, are, are, are you very confident you're going to get to 30 points, and I don't think anybody should ever be fully confident in that, but I'll say yes. In fact, when you look at the Giants, the Buccaneers, and the, uh, well, we know the Panthers are wins all across the board. I think for the sake of expediency, we beat the Buccaneers with a bad D and a bad QB. Not not combined, I'm saying individually, because the team is just kind of really deteriorating here. And for the Giants, I'll say we'll, we'll beat them if we have a struggling defense. We will not win if we do not have a good quarterback. All right. So, again, that wasn't massively important in terms of whether you agree or disagree. You can do this on your own and kind of come to your own conclusions. But the point is, what isn't going to be different is 
the fact that you're going to have a different result when you have a good defense and good quarterback compared to a bad defense and good quarterback compared to a bad quarterback and good defense compared to a bad defense and bad quarterback. You're going to have different outcomes. And so let, let's just do the results. With both of them being good, I have the Packers at 16-1. and one. Now again, this isn't necessarily saying if, if, if he pans out and the defense pans out that everything's going to be fine. It's looking at it on an individual level. you got to understand, if Jordan Love has a good year, he's not going to have every single game be a good game. Same goes for the defense. So this isn't going to be the same exact result. But the point is, we, see, we win 16 out of 17, probably realistically 17 out of 17 games, in which the quarterback and the defense are playing at a high level. With a bad defense and a good quarterback, I have it at 13 and 14. With a bad quarterback and a good defense, it's at 9 and 8. With everything being bad, 1 and 16, probably more like, oh, why is it 16? Oh, 1 and 16, probably uh, 0 and 17. And so again, just the, the point of the, the exercise, honestly, is to show how absolutely ridiculous it is for anybody to, to have such a strong stance on any one teams, especially the Packers, because of the question marks but any super strong stance on the Packers record. Because ultimately what, what, it, what really it comes down to is when somebody gives you the record, you ask them why, and then they break it down for you. And then you can go from there. If somebody says, I think the Packers are going to win 10 games, and I think Ro- uh, Love is really going to struggle, and I, I don't think the defense is really going to improve, I think that now you can kind of look at it and go, you know, I don't think given that criteria that that's the case. Or you can have debates about what you think is going to happen on those individual levels. But unless you're willing to have that super in-depth conversation, you're just talking past each other and having a ridiculously nonsensical conversation. What is the point of the conversation? You don't know why somebody thinks what they think. And, and, And the fact of the matter is, the range really is massive. To pretend that the range for any one team, particularly the Green Bay Packers, is so small where it's like, well, they could probably, they'll probably be between like five and seven wins. That's way too small of a range. They could have less than five wins very easily if everything kind of goes... Fo- I mean, just, just, just look at it and say, let's say most things, if not all things, are at their floor. You think they get five wins? No chance. What if most to all things reach their ceiling? You think seven wins is their ceiling? You're an idiot. Ten wins isn't their ceiling. Winning the NFC is the ceiling. Getting to the playoffs, going to the Super Bowl, winning the Super Bowl, that's the ceiling. Now, it's unlikely... But that's the range. It's number one overall pick to number 32 pick. That's not necessarily true of every single team. But when one of the question marks is quarterback, who has a range in terms of how good he can be from worst in the NFL to, I'm not going to say best, but top five, people get, oh, you said, uh, why can't he be? Of course he can be. I didn't say likely. I said it's possible. And it's not nearly as far away from being impossible as you think, from being possible as you think. Jalen Hurts just magically showed up in the top five, so what? So that's the thing. We, we always just look in the past, and, and, and everything just becomes automatic. right? If you would have said that last year, it would have been ridiculous. You say it this year, and it's like, well, duh. I mean, that just makes perfect sense. If you would have said it when he got drafted, you'd have been laughed out of wherever it is you happen to be because he was a joke of a pick. There's nothing more ignorant and annoying than people who pretend that they're super smart because they happen to observe what happened last year and think that because they remember what happened last year, that suddenly they have this magical knowledge. And if you say something different than what happened last year, they have the right to call you an idiot because they think whatever happened last year automatically has to happen this year. We have no idea where the Packers are going to fall. We do know that the range is massive. The only thing you can really do, and, and this is where that PFF thing would be really cool if they allowed you to do it, which apparently they will at some point, is to go in and adjust the grades. And then you can kind of go in, and work in and say, here's what I kind of think somebody's going to be. But you're going to realize as you're doing that, that this is a waste of time because there's no, you know that you're going to be wrong on every single one of these, most likely, at least to a small degree, if not a massive degree. And considering every single one of these tiny little variables makes a massive difference, and that doesn't even include injuries or any other variables like, you know, the opponents you're going up against, the coaching staff, any of that stuff, you realize pretty quickly that it is a complete waste of time. A fun waste of time, maybe, and something that's worth doing for, for the fun of it. But the, the condescending snickers of, oh, you actually think, you actually think, you, you don't know. You don't know. It's amazing people watch football and they don't know this stuff. Like, we see this happen every year. The Seattle Seahawks were supposed to be like the worst team in football last year. Do you remember that? 
what happened? I remember that was the thing Darlington was talking about. Like, you know, this is just like the Patriots. They lose a Hall of Famer, and it's like, you know, oh, maybe this is they're going to be better with Mac Jones, which I don't think anybody said that, but okay. And what happened to the Patriots? Okay, that's an example. How about we do the Seahawks? You lose an elite quarterback who goes to Denver, and Denver is supposed to be like one of the elite teams in the NFL. Remember, elite defense, they're just a quarterback away, and 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 the AFC... West was going to be an absolute powerhouse. You got the Kansas City Chiefs. You got the Denver Broncos. You got the Raiders who just got Devontae. You got the Chargers who went out and got Khalil Mack and added him with Bosa. Like, this is going to be the most elite. Like, the Chiefs might even be the worst in the division. They might even be fourth. It's crazy. Of course, none of that happened. And the Seahawks are going to be garbage because they replaced a, essentially a Hall of Famer, an elite, elite, elite quarterback, with some known garbage quarterback in Geno Smith. Well, Geno ends up being one of the better quarterbacks in football, which zero people would have bet on because it was stupid to put money on that. And the Denver Broncos were a joke largely because of that addition at quarterback. That was the reason the team was terrible. Not like they couldn't get out of out of their slump even despite that. No, 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 no. That dude, he was the reason they were bad. Zero people would have bet on that. Even if you thought Russell Wilson was overrated, nobody thought he was going to be that bad and would be the sole reason that that team, which does have some promise at least on it, couldn't even begin to make strides because Russell Wilson was so bad. But we just, we just forget that because we want to come back and sound smart about stuff. You have to answer the variable questions first before you can even begin to get into this pondering. But nobody even wants to do that. There's, oh, I kind of think, well, yeah. Well, you know, they, how many did they win last year? Okay, well, then subtract Rodgers, they're going to win two. There you go, done. That's my analysis. And then, then you get Darlington or whatever with his bleached teeth sitting there with this little smirk on his face, like, you guys are so stupid. I'm the smart one here. And he couldn't even name half the players on our roster anyways. But anyways, that project's in the books now. Point landed. I'm going to leave it at that. You guys have a good rest of your day. I will talk to you tonight, tomorrow, whatever. Have a good one. Goodbye.